Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is... Goblin Grapple. It's a 2-5 to five player game, ages 10 and up, and it takes about 30-45 to 45 minutes to play a game. In the game Goblin Grapple, you're going to be playing as Goblin Warlords, and your objective in the game is to try and score as many points as possible by securing goblins in your army, as well as fighting against other players' goblin army. You'll be playing cards from your hand in order to attack, and as you attack them, you're going to be trying to get higher numbers. However, there's some additional cards in the game, like spies and defenders that you can play from your hand, but your objective mainly is to score points. At a certain point in the game, you're going to score a certain amount of points on your field, and when that happens, everybody's going to score whatever they have in their field, along with what is in their army. Uh, the game here it comes with a magnetic box along with the cards here. I have a little special unfiltered gamer version of the game. But there are also op options where you can actually get a hand or handcrafted, I guess, wooden box. It's like etched in. And also little baby guys here. But anyway, let's go ahead and show what the game looks like and how it's played. So here are the contents for Goblin Grapple, and as you can see, I have brought the little mini game as well as the deck box here, and it'll be different for everybody. But in the game, if you get the deck, if you get this little wooden box here, you're gonna be getting this, along with this little piece of paper, which is up here, and it just shows that this is actually all prototype material. So all of this might change after the Kickstarter has been completed. But this will actually go right in here, and you would take it out. Pretty simple, right? You're also then going to go ahead and get this box here, which is a signature magnetized box, and it's gonna open up just like that, nice and easy. However, it's not going to go anywhere really it's it's pretty pretty sturdy with that magnet there but then you can get all the cards in here and there are a plethora of different cards but they all have the same aspects they have a number which is going to represent their power and they have their name along with a potential ability on each of the cards and you get a big fat stack of them so that is what you're going to be getting in the game goblin grapple let me tell you how to play the game so to begin a game of goblin grapple you're simply going to take the cards out of this deck box here and then you're going to shuffle them up it's just a big stack of cards and then you're going to deal everybody out five cards from the deck take the deck shuffle up deal everybody out five and then on your turn you're simply going to then give one get one card from the deck so draw five and then at the beginning of your turn draw one after that point you can put any cards you want on your turn into your battlefield in any order you so choose after you've done that you can play cards from your hand on other people's battlefields to attack or simply play them back onto your battlefield some cards are exceptional and they'll actually be able to be used on other players turns or to do some kind of special ability and it's going to continue go along that way whenever you battle you're going to score points points based on who has the highest number, and sometimes you'll be able to use some special unique cards that Mikey's going to talk about right now. And here they are. So on, in general, you have your numbers from 0 to 8 on all your cards, 8 being the strongest, which is your king. Now, the king, yes, the strongest card can only be beaten by the assassin. Now let's say, you know, the king and the assassin are fighting together, well, I don't want to lose my king, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my defender to pull my king back and, you know, save my king for hopefully later. Because basically a defender is going to be able to be played from your hand to return the card you're battling with and then be used in place of that so that eight is still going to beat that one. However, you would also use it on, you would also always use it on the, the king whenever it's being attacked by the assassin, right? Right. And which also leaves me the spy. Now what the spy can do is you play the spy on the other player to look at their hand and I get to look at their hand and decide what, wow, what card they want to take. Which card I so want to take. So he would actually take a card from my hand, and then he would give me a card uh, from his hand to my hand. So usually he's going to get the better deal. Those are the basic different aspects of cards. The rest of them are just going to be basic uh, numbers from three, four, five, so on and so forth. But that's the idea of the game. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like down below and how to play a couple rounds. So let's go ahead and begin a couple rounds of the game. We'll start off by giving each player five cards. Two, three four and five and then going ahead and having them look at the cards in their hand these are the cards in my hand i've got a couple threes i've got a five and i've got two defenders two ones now i will go ahead and start the game off i'm going to simply draw a card for my hand and then we're going to place down my cards in any order i select onto the field uh, as a battle in my battleground area so we'll just put a three and a five down we'll put it like this and then the rest of these cards are gonna go into my hand. Now, he doesn't have anything on his side of the field, so I'm not gonna be able to attack him yet, but these cards in my army are gonna to count towards my points at the end of the game, as well as any cards I win. So Mikey's gonna go ahead now and draw a card. All right, here I go. So this will be my hand right here. Ooh, assassin. All right, so I have no idea. I wasn't really even paying attention to what he was placing down over there right now, but I would like to set up my own point area down here. Now, from what I'd like to do is, I'm not really sure. I want to have one strong attacker for when I when it's on my turn, but I don't want to lose too easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down three 
threes down there. Okay, so he's got three cards down, I've got two, and whenever we fight it's going to be on the top card. Now he can choose if he wants to attack me by simply choosing a card from his hand and putting it onto my army or anybody else's in the game. Right now it's just two players. Are you going to fight me? Yes sir, I am. So well. he's going to choose his five, we're going to flip over my card. We both have fives, okay? So when, in this case it's a tie. Now, what can happen is, as a defender, I can choose if I want to place another card face down to defend myself. If I choose not to, I lose, however I'm choosing to. He also has the option to put a card face down as well, if he'd like to try and defend his card. And I think I will. So he does. If this is the case, we're then going to flip over these cards here, and the five is going to be the two, in which case I would gain all of these points. Now remember, a round is over once somebody gets 21 points in their discard or point scoring area. At which point now he can choose to end his turn or he can simply uh, attack again. Do you want to end your turn? I will end my turn. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw a card. I got another one, another defender. I'm going to go ahead and place this defender, I guess. Oh, I don't know. We'll go ahead and place this right here. And then I'm going to end my turn. I'm not going to attack with these ones because they're not very useful. They are very good when it comes to protecting my cards, but not very good for attacking. All right, go ahead. All right. All right, and I ended up getting another three. Now... I have no idea what's down there, but I can't really keep where it is, so I am going to attack again. So he attacks with his three and we flip over. Once again, we both have a tie, and so we get to choose if we'd like to put another card face down. Um, I think instead I'm just going to go ahead and switch this card with my defender, and in which case the three will beat my one, and he will take the four total points as victory, placing them right there. And now, once again, he can choose to attack if he'd like. Your turn. He's going to pass, so I'll go ahead and draw a card. I've got another interesting card here. I'm not going to show him this time. I'm going to place it down. His turn. Go ahead and draw a card. All right. What do I get here? And I am going to place it down. Okay. On my turn, I'll go ahead and draw a card. Oh, I got a good one. I got a five. I'm going to go ahead and fight with that one there. All right. I flip it over. It is also a five. All right. Put a card face down. Face down. And flip over, I suppose. Right? Anyways. All right, so my three beats your two. I get all the points here. And as you can see here now, I actually have more than the 21 points required in order to end the round. So we're going to end the round. Now, he's not totally out. He's going to actually get to score all the cards he has face down, along with all the cards he scored as points, just as well as I would. Now, the objective is to get to 100 points. So after we added up all these totals, we'd simply go ahead and play again until somebody got a total amount of 100 points. And if it tied, uh, or whoever got over 100 points, it'd be whoever had the highest amount of points after 100 hundred points. And that is the basic idea of how to play the game, Goblin Grapple. All right, so before we get down to review, let's go ahead and talk about a couple caveats. The first one being, with the Spy, you're going to have to discard a card, and then you can go ahead and switch cards with another player. However, you don't have to do that. You can simply just discard the card to look at another player's hand, because maybe your hand is what? Well, better than your opponent's hand, right? Yeah. So you wouldn't want to go ahead and just give a good card away for a bad card. That would make no sense. Also, another thing, too, is whenever you're tying another opponent, if I put a five down, you put a five down, what do you not have to do? You do not have to defend. You do not have to put another one the on the The defender doesn't have to put a card down, and the attacker doesn't have to either. If either of them choose not to do that, the other player will win, though. So usually it's a good idea to do that. However, if you have a one, you're more than likely going to lose. That's the only card you have in your hand, so you might as well give the least amount of points. The last thing is, yes, I might have won that round, but that doesn't matter because overall he might win. And also, just because I won a lot of points there, doesn't mean that necessarily that the cards he has face down aren't worth a lot of points still, because he's scoring all the cards in his army. For instance, he might have three kings face down, and that's going to be 24 points, which is a ton of points, right? So let's go ahead and talk about a review of the game. We'll go into a couple uh, details as far as theme, as far as complexity, replayability, and all that good stuff. The first thing is theme. It's goblins, right? The idea is goblins are expendable. And so I like the theme of this game because you're basically just playing them and they're just dying all over the place. Co points are being scored. Points are being uh, earned at the end of a round. Sometimes you're going to get points simply by just having a bunch of people in your army and not actually fighting at all and let everybody else duke it out. And sometimes you're going to be just going at it aggressively, right? So I like the theme of the game. For you, what do you think? Absolutely. It, you're just getting a mass of goblins all together and just watching them duke it out. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? You're just drawing cards and playing them down. As far as complexity, this game's not complex. And it has oh. very few uh, unique cards. I think there's four totally. You've got like the spy, you've got the assassin, you've got the defender, and then you've got the main one, which was like the king. Most of them are going to be threes uh, and some fives, and um, you know the rest of them are just like twos and ones, which are the, the more unique ones are the lower ones, too, right? Yes. So if you have a king, that assassin's dangerous. But if you don't have a king, 
the assassin is almost going to lose every time. The only time it's going to win is against a defender, right? Right. So uh, as far as complexity, it's not really all that there, but that's okay because it's a quick throwing type of game. I mean, that doesn't really bother me for this specific type of game. It's almost a gateway game where you just simply, let's play for five minutes, ten minutes. Or maybe I'll play an entire tournament and you can play 100 points. So either way it works, right? It's so, even great in larger groups as well. I mean, when we played four players last time, I mean, it just, it was awesome. Yeah, it, it just went. It just played really fast. People thought, oh, I'm losing. And then suddenly, no, they're not. They got a ton of points from playing the face down. When I first played the game, I, I missed up, messed up, and didn't realize that I, you score on the army you have too. And once I found that rule out, I was like, oh, that's what makes this game a lot, a lot cooler. I really enjoy it now more. Um, the quality, the components, all very, very nice. I know that the Kickstarter's going to have different, uh, different backings and all that kind of stuff, but I like the wooden box. I like the magnetic box that it comes with. The cards are nice quality, and the artwork is really nice as well. I really like the artwork on all these cards. I've had two different types of artwork for the game, and these are definitely by far uh, better, as well as the layout. Really, really simple to understand, really simple to play. I think most people get the game, understand it in like four or five minutes probably, right? Very easy to understand. I mean, any cons other than just it's not very complicated. It's a very simple mechanic, mechanically. Uh, no, unless you don't like goblins. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like goblins, if you don't like small, basic card games, then uh, you probably won't like this game. But otherwise, if you don't mind just a quick throwout game that you just go out and just start attacking each other, um, some interesting strategical options as far as do you want to attack, do you want to sit back, do you want to switch, do you want to trade, and when the best time to do certain things is. As well as that whole interesting thing where the cards are face down and you want to attack, but at the cost of the end round maybe ending. Or... Interestingly enough, too, maybe you got a ton of points face down, and you don't have a lot of points anywhere else, but you have a, cra a bad card, and you attack somebody knowing they have a king on top there, or at least you think they do. You're going to end the round because they're going to gain those points, but you're going to gain more points overall, thus having you win the game. So there is some in-depth strategy that you just, you know, you can have to think about there. Um, anything else that you can think of, replayability-wise? Uh, it's definitely different every single time you play. The first time I played, I almost had nothing but threes. But, you know, after that, you know, I've had kings, assassins. It, every game is different. I mean, every for game. me, it feels kind of samey as you continue playing it because it only has so many different types of cards, really. But the way you can play the game, it gives it a more replayable nature. And you can try and change up your strategy depending on how you're playing. And you can also read your opponents. There's a bit of bluffing in the game as well as far as what they have in their hands and how you're going to be playing the cards face down or face up. As far as what you're going to get... I mean, in general, it's going to be the same type of cards over and over again. Right. There's not a huge combination there, so I don't want to make you think there's like 50 different cards in the deck. There's, there's, I think there's like eight total different cards, give or take, in the, in the deck. But it works really well, and it's really fun for a basic gateway, duke them out, and it almost as a take that, but not really. It's more strategic strategy than it is just yes. that. So overall, how do you rate the game? I rate the game as I would add it to my personal library and play it with my daughter. Awesome. I would definitely add it as well to my collection. I think it's a really fun game, really simple, and still unique enough to where I bust it out and just play it for a simple card game among friends or new gamers specifically. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help as well as... Checking out the Goblin Grapple link in description below. And also checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. It has blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. As well as check out our sponsors, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, we look forward to seeing See you, you next time. time.